Shalom, and thank you for joining me. I'm going to get right to it. Um, I'm going to tell you about a dream I had over 30 plus years ago. Um, I had delivered my first son. He's now 32 years old, so it's a long time ago. But it's almost as if the, the Most High Yahweh brought it back up to my mind uh, because I believe we're in the time of Jacob. We're in the time of the fulfilling of all the prophecies about the Hebrew uh, people and, and how our lives uh, have been called into a destiny. And everything that's happening around you now is a sign and a symbol that God is on the move. He's awakening us. He's humbling our enemies. This is an opportunity to uh, arise, stand up, and look up because your redemption is drawing now. And that means to be prepared to leave America. And that's what I've been telling you for a long time. So let me tell you about the dream though, because it was so beautiful. And I, I sort of feel sort of bad because I had um, sort of put it back in my memory from years ago, hadn't thought much about it until all of these things started happening with the coronavirus and this young man who uh, uh, was murdered and all of the um, you know different people taking a stand and so God brought it back to my memory and so here's the way it went okay uh, in those what years uh, I had a baby my husband and I had recently at that time had bought a house the house was a, a a nice little house it had like this back little what do you call um a hallway that went out onto a a back porch i wouldn't call it a porch i'd say it was an enclosed sort of area and had glass windows but you know it had a pool table and different little things you go out so you know, some people call it a rec room okay so but uh so i one day my husband was at work i decided to lay down and take a nap with my newborn baby so i laid him down we had sort of like a powder blue carpet it was soft so i thought you know i'll just lay him down a little blankie and we'll just both take a nap you know how that is when you're recuperating from childbirth so I lay down to take a, a nap asleep I heard someone knocking at that door it wasn't the door in the living room which was you know on over towards the kitchen this I knew it was the back door so I got up at least I thought I did because to this day I do not know if this was a visitation or a dream okay so so I got up I remember getting up I went down this hallway and opened this back door that led out onto this porch and there before me stood what I would come to find out was Isaac, Rebecca, and Jacob the baby. So that picture that you're seeing on this video is exactly what I saw. I tried to draw it you know by memory what I saw. I saw this tall strong Mandinka looking warrior with gold on his dark arms um, you know, a sword, a spear in his hand with gold. You, you could get the sense of awe and um, wealth. And he had his arms around Rebecca. She had her arms around the little baby. He looked so happy. I wish I could have got his face exactly how I saw, but he had this little <laughs> kind of look on. And he had a little nappy, you know, the little diaper, but it was made out of um, some kind of uh, leaves. Um, that had been sewn together. I'd never seen anything like that before. So when I when I looked at them, she spoke and she said, uh, "My name is Rebecca, and I salute you." And I was smiling, but I didn't say anything. So I think I went back to go to sleep, or either I was asleep and woke up. So either way, um, I remember the dream. It was very vivid. And you know, in our culture, we say a salute means like, you know, a military salute or we salute the flag. So I decided when I was researching for this just the other, other day about this video, I said, I better make sure I know what salute means because she said, I salute you. And uh, looking it up in the Hebrew, um, you know, I, I looked up salute in Hebrew and it was saying to... Um, congratulate you, to show you um, appreciation, uh, to uh, give you honor or um, acknowledging you. Uh, and also it says, it goes on to say to show emotion or love and even with a kiss. So salute was a lot of things. And in reading that definition, I, it would touch me. 
at 30 years later, it touched me because I realized this was a salute. This was her, Rebecca and, and, and uh, Isaac, saying, hi, we know you are our descendant and you just had your firstborn son. And we want to salute you. We want to show you our honor and our uh, respect. And I was so blown away. And today it makes me realize they weren't just speaking to me. They were speaking to you also. They were saying, we are your descendants. It doesn't matter if uh, another race has tried to take over, lie, cheat, and beat you out of who you are and what you are. We know from heaven what you are. Can you think about that for a minute? They know. So, I want to talk to you a little bit about who Rebecca is and what I found out about her in the Word and through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so, this is what I found out. First of all, her name means um, knotted uh, rope, like uh, uh, something bound together. So, it, And really, it does mean that because she was a light-skinned black woman. I could see that. She had braids in her hair. And... Um, so she was from a mixed, some kind of mixture in her lineage. Okay. So, of course, we have that too in our, our uh, DNA today and people. So, now, she was Abraham's great niece. Abraham had a brother. His brother was named Nahor. Nahor married a woman named Milcha, which means queen. They had a son called Bethuel. Well, Bethuel marries a woman. It doesn't say who he married, but um, this was Rebecca's dad. Uh, Bethuel was his dad, and Bethuel means um, house of God. You know, Beth means house, God, Bethuel. Bethuel also had a son. The son was the oldest. His name was Laban. You'll read about him in Genesis like 30, somewhere in there. Okay. Laban was Rebecca's older brother. And uh, of course, like I said, Rebecca means knotted card, means like knotted together, two people. In old days, the Hebrews chose names for their children based on the children's character, sometimes, a lot of times, on the children's appearance, their color, facial features. Um, lots of things went into play when they chose a name, not like today, where we just choose any old name. Okay, so. Um, her name was that. Her brother Laban, Laban means white. So we know that Rebecca and her brother must have come from some kind of mixed background. We know Nahor was Abraham's brother. And then Bethuel was Nahor's son. So I asked uh, the Most High. I do that. When I, when I come and I research and I come to a little block, I will go to the Father Most High Yahweh, who knows everything. And I ask, um, well, who was Rebecca's mother? And the word that he gave me was that she was Persian. She was of a Persian mix. And so we know that Persians are basically related to Arabs. Uh, but in those days, the Arabs had not conquered Babylon as of yet and Assyria. So this was, think about this, this was like 3,000 years before, close to 3,000 years before Yeshua HaMashiach was born. The Persians conquered that area uh, more recently, you know, than when Abraham was there. And I think that's why God called Abraham out from the land of Ur of the Chaldees. The Chaldees were European Gentiles, and they weren't just European Gentiles, they were European fallen angel hybrids. And of course, that's a rough road to hoe uh, when you're dealing with that kind of stuff. So that's one of the reasons he was called out. So this Rebecca's mother was of a mixed race and mixed with Persians. And so, but this woman was not, um, she was not a white woman. She was very wise. She was like Abraham. She was a descendant of Abraham. Think about it. She was Abraham's great niece. Her father was a close relative of Abraham. So, uh, you know why I said she was wise? Because she was smart enough to see that Esau was more like her family line. He was red. The Bible said he was red and hairy. Uh, Jacob was more spiritual. Esau was more fleshly. She saw that. And if she was a good mother because she could have just said, oh, well, you know, Esau looks like me and my side of the family. And I'm going to make sure he gets that birthright because he's the oldest. And it's going to show, you know, honor to my family. No, this woman was a righteous woman because she saw that Jacob was a righteous son. 
and she made sure that he received the birthright that Esau willingly gave up. She was only taking what was given. No one stole anything. A lot of Matt, you know, pastors and priests try to preach that into a sermon. Uh, that's a lie itself. Going on, moving on. Okay. Um, she had, Rebecca had Abraham's genes, in other words. She had Abraham's genes. She was noble. She saw righteousness and she stood beside of it. Uh, even though it didn't turn in her favor. She, maybe, you know, of course, family. Now, Laban was not like that. He took after that mother. He was worldly. He was greedy. He was covetous. And if you read on down in Genesis like 30, 31, you will see that when Jacob flees from Esau, he goes to live with Laban, who is Rebekah's brother. And Laban means white. In Hebrew, Laban means white. So it goes again to prove that um, they were of mixed race. And when Jacob comes, respecting him and coming honestly, he tr tricks uh, Jacob two or three times, then starts coveting his animals and how, uh, you know, how blessed he is with his stock and, and, and starts trouble. And even his son, Laban's sons, were greedy, covetous, and jealous. Now back up just a little bit. When this servant of Abraham first came to look for a wife for Isaac, Laban was the first one that came running out. And it says that um, Laban saw the bracelets and the gold that the servant had given Rebecca as a you know a marriage proposal and it was just exciting to him. He got all over himself. He was he was if you read closely, he almost was running the whole show. Uh, when it was time for Rebecca to go uh, back with the servant and marry Isaac. So this Laban was very much like Esau, very grasping, very greedy, and that's why the word says uh, Esau I hated, Jacob I loved, the word of God says. You can find that in Malachi. You can also find that in um, in the Rome, book of Romans, where God knew even when Esau was in the womb of uh, Rebekah what kind of man he was going to be. So it said that the uh, elder would serve the younger. And a lot of people try to turn that around, but that's just the way it is. Truth is truth. It says, just as two nations were in her womb, so too were uh, there two nations. The good part of her was from Abraham. So um, she, uh, her and her family were a little different. Um, but she had that, you know, distinguishing character. Um, and at the last, before Jacob started looking for a wife, she told uh, Isaac that she did not want him marrying the Canaanites. Now, the Canaanites were descendants of Heth which was Canaan's. A lot of people try to say Ham was the father of Canaan. That's not true. That's a lie too. Uh, Cain, Adam and Eve, that son that came with Adam and Eve, was the father of the Canaanites. The European Gentiles have tried to whitewash that, change it. Well, we won't say whitewash, blackwash that. But actually, that's why they were called Canaanites, because they came from Cain. They were European Gentiles in appearance. You know, the blonde hair, the white skin. And that's because, as my book tells you, um, Eve allowed Satan to seduce her and commit the first adultery, bringing forth that first child, who was a fallen angel hybrid. Cain was not a regular sized man. He was probably over 10 or 12 feet tall. He was strong. He was powerful. And cutting Abel's throat was probably like cutting butter. So we must understand that there's a lot of trickery going on that uh, uh, these European Gentile translators have tried to cover up. But the Holy Spirit will always uncover the truth. And so, please don't spread that lie anymore. Pastors, ministers, please don't spread that lie anymore that uh, uh, Ham was the one cursed. It says, Noah, when he awoke, cursed his youngest son. Even the Merriam-Webster Dictionary says Japheth was the youngest. And if you notice all throughout the Bible, um, when it describes siblings, it always lists the oldest to the youngest. And it always says... Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Japheth being the youngest. Also, Shem really is pronounced Sham, Sham, not S-H-I-M, but S-H-A-M, Hebrew spelling. It means dusky, dark. That's why you hear Ham in his name, Sham. And then Ham is really pronounced Cham. Cham means black, burnt, 
dark and it also means um, hot but not hot like heat it means hot like virile strong that can bring forth many children so that's why God renamed Abram Abraham meaning the father Abba means father Abraham means uh, burnt black just like ham or cham so even Sham was dusky. Sham means dusky, close to being dark, dark brown. So read it for yourself. Those are all true statements and true facts. Now Japheth, notice his name's totally different. That's because the Holy Spirit revealed to me that Japheth was not Noah's biological son. You must understand in the days of the giants, in the days of the fallen angels, there were many of these um, women who were raped by the, they didn't matter who they chose. Don't believe, in Genesis, they tried to clean it up. These giants raped who they chose, or and married, or and or, both. But, and in doing so, these women would sometimes die during the, you know, during the time of the men going into them, being giants, sometimes 15 feet. 20 feet high, uh, you can imagine what can happen to a female. Then those who did survive would have children so big that sometimes they would die during childbirth. So you had these fatherless, motherless children, hybrids, um, and at that time Noah was related to Cain, even though they probably weren't that close, they were related. So Noah took this child in called Japheth. Hoping that somehow he would be different from those others, the Canaanites. But yet he did the same thing. He was a grown man. He was married. Remember eight people. All of them had wives. He looks at his father's nakedness because he was acting like a Canaanite. Canaanites loved homosexuality. They ruled Sodom and Gomorrah later on years later. So it was the same M.O. And so when Noah awoke from his wine and realized what his youngest son, read the word, Genesis said, had done, he cursed him, but he cursed Canaan because Japheth was a Canaanite. Thank you so much for listening. The truth cannot be hidden. The Holy Spirit will reveal what man has tried to cover. And so this is the time of Jacob. Thank you for joining me. I will continue to bring this word when God gives it to me. I take my time because I want to always speak the most high's words, not my own. Thank you so much. May you be blessed.